Hello, you're watching Avenue X, and this is my third video at the end of 2022 as a summary video of this year's Chinese drama land. Today, I'm gonna list five of my favorite drama CP that has happened in Chinese drama land this year with a few runner-ups at the end. They are totally my personal picks, and you are likely to have your own that didn't end up on my list. So please do share that in the comment section, and let's all have fun. Today I'm gonna list them in order of the dramas going live during this year, and <laughs> to avoid a fight of who is the better one. They are very different in nature, so they all each deserve their own position. Let's start around Chinese New Year this year, January, when two dramas basically aired at the same time, and both of them contain a CP that ended up on my list. The first couple from the drama, Ren Shijian, A Lifelong Journey, Zheng Juan, Zhou Bingkun, played by Ying Tao and Lei Jiayin. This is the oldest couple in age, in terms of the actors and actress on my list today. This is also probably the most qualified actor CPs in terms of how well established both actor actress are in the industry already. Also, they probably play the hardest CP among all the CPs I'm gonna mention today. One is the drama is so long. The second is they have to play the roles across a very large age span from their teenager years, early 20s to when they got old and gray hair. And they've pulled off those two roles so well. Thinking about a lifelong journey really is an ensemble drama, and they are not the only great CP we have in the story. For example, the older brother of Lei Jiaying's role and his relationship with his wife is also a tear-jerking one. And even Lei Jiaying's role's parents <sighs> broke my heart, that old couple. In a way, it's a really realistic but highly romantic drama, and manages to do both. You see this half a century span, people are very poor, there's very limited resources, things don't even look pretty 99% of the time on screen. On the hardware side of things, this is not the romantic and pretty drama. But then, even though the limited resources and things of this drama didn't stop it being highly romantic, for example, this couple, they have so many weirdly not pretty, but holy shit, so beautiful and romantic moments, such as when the male lead first had this feeling towards the female lead when he watches her. That camera angle of panning <laughs> along her body and seeing her neck and hair and the glowing of the skin under the sunlight, that's such a romantic camera language. For example, the slow motion of her skating and smiling. Ying Tao's smile is one of the best smiles in Drumland, and that shot captures it perfectly. Or the super highly emotionally charged moment later in the drama when in court to save the husband, the wife, literally told everyone in court in public of her greatest secret. And that moment just breaks you if you watch the drama to that point. Honestly, if there needs to be acting awards on the screen for a CP, uh, they should get it for this year. They're on a different caliber, basically. So they become the first one on my list, and also because it really did happen around Chinese New Year, <laughs> okay? So it's one of the earliest dramas. Second one, since I've already told you it happened around the same time, if you still remember, you'll know it is Li Shiqing and Xiao Heyun from Reset Kaiduan got blown up 25 times. <laughs> couple. Bai Jingting, Zhao Jingmai played this young couple who met under such weird circumstances, who technically only had one day to know each other, but they've lived that day so many times that it becomes much, much bigger. And then their love is formed under extreme pressure situation. Super highly dramatic. Think about the film many years ago from the US, Sandra and Keanu's Speed. It's pretty much the same situation, right? Because there's a bomb, there's a bus that cannot be stopped, and they fall in love under extreme circumstances. In the film land, that couple didn't really end up together uh, when you have the second film. But in this drama, I think at least from the storyteller's perspective, they really want these two to end up together, that eventually when they get awards from their uh, city government in front of a pure red background, and both of them were wearing white, which is the standard backdrop and clothing when you take a photo, getting married in China, 
put that on your marriage certificate. That's how it works. So it's kind of like suggesting they definitely end up together. Also, their names are destined. Both of them contained in one verse or line of a poem suggesting they're definitely gonna end up together. And in a drama, when they introduced themselves to each other, they realized, hey, our names actually are in the same line of poem. In a sunny bright sky, a crane flies up and pushes away the cloud. By seeing that, it draws out my emotion to write poetry into the sky. That's what that line means. And Although this drama doesn't have the usual things of a long drama where you have all the time and all the circumstances for two characters to show you all the details for you to ship having fun with the CP. So it's not the most shippable CP in terms of its heart for the audiences to imagine more scenarios just because they are so limited in the space and time of the story. But then they do experience the most extreme situations possible. It may not be the most long lasting and you probably cannot write too many fan fictions of this CP. But every time if you go back and rewatch this drama, you will so easily be taken along their journey and have so much fun. Moving along the timeline, away from Chinese New Year into March, ITE. And you already know, Under the Skin, Lie Zui Tu Jian, Du Cheng, Shen Yi, played by Jin Shi Jia and Tan Jian Si. This is the only male male CP on my list for 2022, and it's not even a BL. It just happens to have two male leads. They're both policemen working in very different styles and specialized field, coming together, forming a team while breaking all kinds of interesting cases along the line, developing their own characters and their relationship solving their previous beef and becoming good friends. Very classic story structure for crime story and very maturely and beautifully executed by IT this year. This is probably one of my favorite dramas this year, most rewatched drama for me. I would say before this drama aired, I totally didn't expect it's gonna be this good. I also didn't expect that chemistry between these two actors are gonna work out so well. Magic happens sometimes. I think the success of this drama comes from definitely script level. They did so much work researching, figuring out the particular police work that Shen Yi's character does in reality. And then they really picked a lot of interesting angles and cases that adding a lot of not really necessarily needs to be explicitly explained but sharp observations of what's going on in our world currently, in the society currently, being represented by these cases while they are very good at picking out the most dramatic things that you can have for two main lead roles. So that this drama is on the detective side of things, engaging enough and interesting enough, but also on character development, relationship development, shippable enough. I know it's not BL, but I ship them anyway. Whether this drama is gonna have a second season or not, we don't know, maybe not. But as it stands on itself, in the imaginary land of drama land where there is a police station called Beijing, where there are two policemen like Du Cheng and Shen Yi, they are happily working in their positions and solving all the cases and uphold the justice and being good policemen. I'd like to believe in that and I hope everybody who's watched this drama would also believe in that. If you haven't heard about something really funny, <laughs> which is, this is the unexpected Chen Tan Jia Niang V.2. In China, when a CP happens or before it even happens, people like to term them with language puns. For Tan Jian Si, because he led a BL drama that didn't air and we don't know if it's ever gonna air, Sha Po Lang with Chen Zhe Yuan. Before this drama even came out, people have already named their CP as Chen Tan Jia Niang, Chen Zhe Yuan, Tan Jian Si. And the word Chen Tan Jia Niang means an old pottery pot that holds a wine or alcohol that's been brewing there for a long time. So beautiful name, okay, very clever. <laughs> but because the drama didn't happen, Lie Zui Tu Jian came along and people realized, actually we can use this CP name, repurpose it, exactly not changing anything, still using Chen Tan Jia Niang. But this time not looking at the Chen, looking at Tan and Jia, and it's Chen Tan Jia Niang V2. Weird, isn't it? Coincidence happens in this world. We don't know why, but hey, it's it's just funny. Keep moving on towards the summer of this year around June. 
We have the Tencent drama airing. I made a lot of videos on that one. A Dream of Splendor, Meng Huailu, Gu Pan Shenghui, Gu Qianfan, played by Chen Xiao, and Zhao Pan Er, played by Liu Yifei. In my reviews, I've talked a lot about all the controversies and the weird things happening in Chinese drama land when the drama got popular. So if you're curious about that, you can go back and check those videos. Here, just talking about the CP. I wouldn't say this is the best, let's say, a drama BGCP ever in period drama land. And it's played by two people who are at the age where it is a little bit too old for them to say being the young idol type of CP anymore. One is already married, the other person is also like similar age. They've been around in drama land for long enough. But holy shit, I enjoyed their CP so much because first, they're both such good looking people. It's like a classic painting. <laughs> staring at it, just looking at it with my eyeballs will give me physical, biological reaction pleasure. Nothing can replace that. You're a human, you have a flesh body, you have hormones and they hit on my hormone receptors. And I did so many drawings for this drama, you know, you, you can tell like how, how, how pretty they are so that I draw pretty for them. Also, because this drama is directed by this director who is really good at pulling that push and pull of a male and a female who are both mm, very attractive. That dynamic, all the little details of people who have feelings for each other but who are at the uh, stage where they haven't really mm, solidifying their relationship. Golden subtle push and pull happens so much in this drama and juicy. I think back in June and how I giggled like a little girl and just did this. <laughs> while watching this drama. Yeah, there's little you can do outside of the drama for this couple because one of them is married and then they're both at the age where, you know, like it does not make sense to, to have all those over the top fan fictions written for them. But in the drama land itself, I wish Gu Pan the happy life forever and they're so perfect. Oh, they exist to remind you like how great physical life can be. Then moving right to the very heat of the summer. <laughs> Without question, the fantasy young actors and young audience oriented and then the classic type of shippable BG fantasy land CP. Lan Qiang, Xiao Lan Hua, played by Yu Shuxing, and Dong Fang. Dongfang Qingcang played by Wang Hedi. Another totally unexpected CP. And pretty much for all the audiences who were watching this drama and loved this drama before they went in, they thought this is just gonna be another crappy fantasy drama that's made to make a quick buck, please a couple of fans of a couple of lead actors, and then get out of there. First couple of episodes. Ah, interesting. Up to episode 9, so the first quarter of this drama, when that epic moment happens, everybody is like, <laughs> cheering. And this drama really is divided into four parts. Nine, 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 nine. Even when they aired it, it's like that. First nine episodes happened in one physical location. Next nine, another location. Next nine, another location. It's actually following that weird structure of divided it into four parts. Each part have a center. <laughs> if you haven't realized that, go and watch it. You know, it's exactly nine, 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 nine. And nine is the uh, numerology sort of like that that number right before it goes to 10 and it goes back to one so ah, all the mysteries in this world do we need to talk more about this cp because <laughs> it's the closest on my list right to today that really made it rather big in dramaland this year and probably still really fresh in a lot of people's memory it is the completely flipping the classic relationship 100 80 drama of that CEO and little girl, the straw man and the much weaker woman, completely rewriting the original story, making it the updated 21st century version of a overused and very tropey genre of Chinese dramas and making it new and adding so much unexpected highlight in it. There's so many good things you can talk about uh, about this drama, although it's not perfect towards the end. Uh, <laughs> the script definitely can be improved on that, but it has given us so much surprise and so much happy, positive, unexpected surprise that it deserves a place in this year's Chinese drama land. Even if you consider all different genres of dramas together, compare it to all the other serious dramas, crime dramas, dramas on this list, for example, it still stands out as a very <laughs> shining gem. I think because of uh, the not so famous, the two leads of this drama, 
before the drama was airing. And the nature of a fantasy story of that, a lot of people still actually underestimate how much work was done in this drama and how good it is. Love as such a cliche word that's being beautifully represented in this drama between father and son, between men and women, between sisters, brothers, between teachers and students, all forms of love and how love can really save the world. It's such a cliche concept, but it's been actually so detailedly picked apart, played out in this drama. I think a lot of people still actually underestimate this drama. They got blinded by the superficial things about huh, this type of drama, how can it possibly be? Well, I would say if you miss it because of that reason, it's your loss and it's our gain for everybody who's loved this drama. And the CP, Wang Hedi and Yu Shuxin, gonna stay on my fantasy drama sort of list of the best CPs for a long time. So now I've finished talking about five of my favorite drama CPs in Chinese drama land this year. Then I have two runner-ups, Xin Han Tan Lan, Love Like the Galaxy, Chen Shaoshang and Lin Bui, played by Zhou Lusi and Wu Lei. And the drama Lighter and Princess, Da Hu Ji Gong Zhu Qing, or later in Chinese got changed to Dian Ran Wo Wen Nuan Ni. Yeah, that name is actually politically very incorrect. Ming Yun Xin Huan, CP, Zhu Yun and Li Xun played by Zhang Jingyi and Chen Fei Yu. These two, I put them there, is I recognize while they were airing, they do have fans, okay, and people do ship them. And I totally understand why it works for other people. Although it doesn't work for me, I think because I'm at the age where this type of particular story and CP does not get through to me anymore. My skin is too thick. And also I think the acting of these two couples cannot convince me to the point where I really can get hormonal. So very personally, they don't work that much on me, but I so see why it may work on other people. So that makes this list a five plus two. Not too bad, okay, in my opinion, for Chinese drama land, for a whole year's worth of work. And I am not the judge <laughs> of Chinese drama land, okay? I don't have final say. I also haven't been able to watch every drama. I do know there are a couple of other dramas, such as Yi Shan, Yi Shan, Liang Xing Xing. A lot of people really, really uh, ship the two leads. Although it's not my type of drama, I totally see why you ship it. So there are many other choices out there, but on my list, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Thank you so much for watching Avenue X, whether you came in very recently, a long time ago, since 2017, I don't know like what I've done to deserve that. Because I understand on YouTube, um, over time people drop out. <laughs> you know, I have subscriptions to channels that I've had many years ago that I no longer watch at all. I just didn't bother to delete them, but they never got pushed to my feed anymore either. And if it's like five years, over five and close to six years since 2017, you've been here, well, I think YouTube should give you people awards instead of like giving me anything if I hit 100k. If you only come recently. Also, still highly appreciate <laughs> your participation and giving me your time and attention. I hope 2023 will give us more good dramas, more good CPs. Can we have like a one explosive CP? Just one. More than Tang Lan Jue's popularity. 2022 is still that bit away from a super big one. Fingers crossed that 2023 we're gonna have at least one. Thank you for watching I'm Nux, I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching and happy new year!